Political realignment in preparation for next year's general election largely informed debate on the political party's bill as members of parliament debated a series of proposed amendments to it. The pattern of debate was all too evident. Madam Speaker, I just wanted my... As members debated a proposed amendment to bar pre-election coalitions between political parties and only recognize post-election coalitions. The constitution itself, in the definition of a majority leader, recognizes that the majority leader could be a leader of a political party or a leader of a coalition or parties. This country was forced into a post-election coalition for it to remain stable. This could have been sorted out if there had been a pre-election uh, package. However, a section of members of parliament opposed the provision for pre-election coalitions and termed it self-serving. The convenience of today, whether that is the convenience of G7 or G9 or G20, are passing clouds, Madam Speaker. And those positions that we find convenient today must not, the plat must not be the platform that dictates how we legislate, Madam Speaker. And when the matter was put to a vote, the proponents of pre-election coalitions easily carried the day. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? Aye! As many as of a contrary opinion say nay? No! The nays have it. Political parties entering into a pre-election pact will however have to deposit their coalition agreement and instruments with the electoral commission three months before the general election. So we shall know the parties that have uh, agreed to a coalition and the terms of the, of the, of, of the coalition to not be secret. In what turned out to be a calculated plan to dilute key provisions of the political parties bill, a majority of the members of parliament amended a clause that required one to give a 14-day written notice to quit a political party. This provision would have made it difficult for those keen on party hopping, especially when they fail to clinch nomination to seek elective seats. I think it's a matter of union. Someone joined the party, he wants to quit. I think once a written notice is given, that should suffice. If we are now legislating for party hopping, for terrible behavior by political parties, that in the course of one day, because you do not have to give notice, you can hope to six or five parties, from G7 to G3 to G10 to G anything. I think we are killing democracy. The bill moves to the third reading, where the House will vote either to pass or reject it, and if passed and assented to by the President, will become the law governing the management of political parties in the country. In the meantime, in a rush to beat the August 26th deadline, the Cabinet approved three constitutional bills. They include the Independent Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission Bill 2011 that seeks to establish an Independent Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, which will replace the current Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission, CAS. Another bill approved by the Cabinet is the Power of Mercy Bill 2011. The bill provides for the procedures of appointing members of the Advisory Committee on the Power of Mercy. The committee will advise the president on petitions of mercy and pardon. The cabinet also approved the Kenya Heroes Bill 2011, which provides for the recognition and honoring of national heroes. Francis Gashuri, Citizen Live at 9.